Again, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Michael from TOEFLresources.com. And today I'm going to talk again about an independent TOEFL essay. Now, you might recognize this essay as the same one from my last video. Um, I uploaded that one without any talking, just with some little tips appearing on the screen. I realized that that kind of video is of limited usefulness. So I thought I would upload another video about this topic where I actually, you know, give you some specific advice and talk about the decisions I made when I wrote it. Now, starting with the question, this is an agree, disagree type question. It goes like this. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? It is better to use printed material such as books and articles to do research than it is to use the internet. Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. Now I've had a few questions about the actual style of the question prompt. Now, as I've said before, there are three main styles that ETS uses when they write the independent question prompt. And they seem to use these three styles again and again and again. Now, to be specific, the most common question style is the one you see on the screen now. It's the agree-disagree style question, where you are given a short sentence and you're asked if you agree or disagree with that sentence. Now, the other two questions. Uh, the second most common type is the preference style. That is a question where you have to state your preference uh, after being given two options. So the question might say, some people prefer to live in the city, other people prefer to live in the countryside. Which do you prefer? Use specific reasons and examples to support your answer. The third and final question style is the three choices question. And that, um, that gives you three choices um, in response to a specific, um, specific kind of situation. So for example, it might say, when making a major purchase, which do you think is the best source of useful information? First, online communities uh, where people write reviews. Second, reviews in newspapers and magazines or third, advice from your friends. So you see, you have to pick one of those choices and write about it. Now, there are some question styles that appear in the popular textbooks, but aren't used anymore. Those include the um, compare and contrast style question. If you see something that asks you to compare and contrast something, that's an old style question. You're not going to get it on the real test. Likewise, if you get a question that asks you to list the characteristics of something. So for example, the question might say, what are the characteristics of a good neighbor? That's also an out of date question style. Finally, I do need to mention that the advantages, disadvantages question style does not seem to come up in the writing section. That's only in the speaking section of the test. So if the question says, or if the question asks you to mention the advantages and disadvantages of something, please know that that's a inaccurate question style. You're not going to be asked to do that on the real test. All right, so let's get into a specific look at this particular essay. Uh, I tried to make this one a shorter essay than usual. This one is 383 words. That's probably going to be the shortest sample essay I put on the YouTube channel. Just wanted to show you that even if your essay is a little bit shorter than usual, it can still be really effective. You can still get a high score with just 380 words. Now we start with an introduction. The first sentence in the introduction is the hook. That is a broad introduction to the general theme. Now, I want to draw your attention to how I began the hook. 
I wrote, it is critically important. And then I continued with, for students to use the best available resources when they conduct research. But pay attention again to this opening. If you're kind of short on ideas, or you don't know quite what to write, this is kind of a little cheat you can use. It is critically important. So if the essay is about, you know, where you prefer to live, you could just say, it is critically important for us to live in a place where we feel comfortable. If the essay is about, you know, choosing the best source of information when making a major purchase, you could say, it is critically important that we think very carefully about our major purchases. So, you know, it's not always going to work, but if you need a sort of, you know, a sort of cheat, a sort of crutch, use something like it is critically important. It might make your job a little bit easier. So the second sentence is my thesis beginning within my opinion. And then I end the introduction with a transition. I feel this way for two reasons. Now, as always, I follow that with my first body paragraph. The first body paragraph starts with my topic sentence, which summarizes the argument in the paragraph, begins with something like to begin with. And then I write a couple of explanatory sentences or I explain in more detail what I meant in the topic sentence. Now I want to draw your attention to uh, this transition as a result of this. That's pretty, uh, that's, that's just, you know, that's a great transitional, that's a great discourse phrase. It's something that Grader is actually looking for. He's looking for things like, as a result, consequence, consequently, in consequence. You know, other phrases like moreover, in particular, for instance, however, therefore. All those little phrases, they often appear at the beginning of a sentence. You're going to be rewarded for using those. As a result of this, it's a great way to link two sentences together. So if you're writing about the best place to live, you could say, Cities are full of very educational facilities. As a result of this, we can feel a very... Or as a result of this, we can live a very fulfilling life. So try to use something like that to link two good sentences together in your own essay. Okay, after those explanatory sentences, I used a transitional sentence to begin my personal example, as always. And I want to draw your attention to how I began the personal example. A great way to begin a personal example is to establish the setting. That is the time or the place. When did it happen? So here I wrote two semesters ago, I was assigned a research paper. You know, you might say, five years ago, I moved to a very large city far away from my hometown. You might say, 10 years ago, I had to decide what type of car to buy. So this is a very uh, easy way to begin a personal example. It sounds very natural, and it's a good way to kind of get your grammar under control. Give it a shot on your own essays. See how it works. Uh, lastly, we're talking grammar a little bit. I wrote, this data was so hopelessly wrong that my professor spotted it immediately. Try to get used to using the so plus adjective that pattern. I was so hungry that I ate an entire horse, right? The city was so amazing that I immediately fell in love with it. The reviews online were so terrible that 
I decided to buy a different car. Again, this is simply a grammatical pattern, but it's one that kind of comes up a lot in these personal examples. So I suggest you kind of practice that a little bit in your own work. Lastly, still talking grammar a little bit. Uh, let's talk about this pattern. If I had taken the time to compare what I had read, I would not have included it. This is called the third conditional. It's, uh, it's hard. It's something that I correct a lot. So it's, but it is something that is very useful in these personal examples. Because you're trying to prove a point, right? You're trying to, you know, argue in favor of the point you've made in the topic sentence. And so you're often saying, you're often kind of making a comparison, right? Talking about cause and effect. So if you had said, if I had moved to a small town, I would have had a less interesting life. If I had asked my friends for advice, I would not have bought in such a shitty car. So again, that's the if I had third conditional. Again, I don't want to turn this totally into a grammar lesson, but that is something you're going to want to study a little bit. So add that to your grammar study list, the third conditional. Uh, I think we're going to kind of start wrapping up the video. There's a second body paragraph. Um, you know, there's not too much I want to say about this. It follows the same pattern as the first one. Starts with a topic sentence, uses the transitional word secondly. There are a, a couple of explanatory sentences. I start my personal example with for example, and then I talk about a specific incident from my life. I use the phrase in contrast to make a comparison. You know, first I describe the book that weren't very good. Oh, sorry. First I described the books that were very, very good. And then I said in contrast, and then I described the articles online, which were very bad. I find in contrast is a very easy phrase to use, and it is one I think that will help your score a little bit. So you could say, for example, the small town I lived in was really boring and depressing because there was nothing to do. In contrast, the major city I moved to was incredibly stimulating because there were movie theaters and libraries all over the place. Try using in contrast. It's easy, but effective. I'm highly recommending it here in your own essays. Lastly, the concluding paragraph, I start with in conclusion, and then I restate my thesis, but having paraphrased it first. I'm not using the exact same words that I used in the introduction. And then in the final sentence, I repeat my two arguments. Again, I'm paraphrasing as much as I can. I don't want to repeat words here. And that's, uh, that's an essay. This one's only 383 words, but I think it could still score, you know, almost perfect. Don't pay attention to those guys who tell you that you need to write 500 words, 600 words. That's bad advice. It's simply going to cause you to make a ton of mistakes. I want you to take my advice, which is to write 380 to 400 words. Don't try to write more than that. It's just not worth it. All right, I am going to leave it at that. But, uh, you know, since this is a repeat essay, I promise I will write another essay really soon and upload that to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you want me to check your own essays, swing by tofelresources.com and um, you can sign up. It's, uh, it's a pretty good service, I think. People seem to like it. All right, take it easy, guys. I'll see you in a few days.